Okay, hello to everybody. The microphone is active again. The recording too. So let us go to our work and we start from the last lecture. So we learned that an irrotational field. <laughs> so uh, not always an irrotational field is conservative. This is the meaning of this statement. In general, so let me be more precise and say that in general, a rotational field is not conservative. Okay, so and now I promised you to show you that, uh, however, irrotationality is very close to conservativity. So I wrote that uh, it is almost conservative. This is not a mathematical statement, almost conservative, but I think it gives the correct idea. There is something missing, but this something that is missing is not so, so much and not so deep. But indeed, to get conservativity, we must add a further hypothesis, and this hypothesis turns out to be very subtle. So I immediately tell you what is the hypothesis, but in order to explain it, we go to planar, planar fields. Hmm? So, so, planar fields. <clears throat> So and the idea is that uh, here we represent planar fields. This is just a notation. We represent planar fields just by using the two first coordinates. So the ones related to x and y axis. Mm -hmm. So in uh, this framework, so f will be function of x and y, and this is equal to f1. So let me write here. Though I will, I will write one and uh, and uh, and two. So this will be f. 1xy and f2xy. This is the notation. Let me correct it a bit by using the pen. So, of course, the field is a vector and these two components are different. The x component is f1 and the y component is f2. Okay? So, uh, with this notation, so according to this notation, The field of the previous example, which is very important and very deep, becomes the following. So we have, now I write it directly with, uh, with a pen. So it is capital F of XY is equal to minus y divided by x squared plus y squared x divided by x squared plus y squared. And remember that this field, as we proved, is irrotational. Yet non-conservative. And also recall that what I told you when introducing this example was that the domain of F was all points in the space except where this denominator, 
was going to zero, which means x equal to y equal to zero. x equal to y equal to zero is uh, the z-axis in the three-dimensional space, but in the two-dimensional space is the origin only. So the domain of f as a planar field is r2 minus the origin, zero, zero. Okay? And now, perhaps you won't believe it, the problem, the fact that this field, even though it is irrotational, is non-conservative, comes exactly from here. Comes from the fact that this domain has a hole. I want to write you in, a, in an informal way first and tell you that... Uh, so, what happens is that... Uh, we can draw a remark, an important remark. The remark is that this domain has a hole. Which is the origin. And this is exactly the problem. <laughs> so I don't have time to go through the whole theory, which is very deep, and it is a very, very nice theory from the mathematical point of view, with a lot of physical consequences that have to do both with magnetic fields, for instance, that are non irrotated, that are, sorry, <coughs> uh, so called solenoidal. So, uh, they typically are non-conservative, even though the Lorentz force is conservative, it doesn't pay any work. So it is quite subtle already, but the subtlety, uh, the, the most striking and most linked to this phenomenon is in quantum mechanics, and it is called the Aharonov-Bohm effect. And this is why I like to, to call this, uh, this field the Aharonov-Bohm field, but, uh, however, I want to explain you now what I mean by a hole, because this is not a mathematical world, and uh, it is quite clear what I mean. I mean that the domain is R2 minus 0, 0. So 0, 0 is not contained in the domain. Okay. And remember that uh, the circulation on a, we computed it on a circle centered in zero is not zero, is to pi, but you can trust me also the circulation here is to pi. And uh, the problem can be described in the following way. So, what do we mean by having a hole? We mean that if you consider a closed curve, if you consider a circuit, Containing the origin, like this one, you see? This one contains the origin. This one does not contain the origin, but this one contains the origin. So if you consider a circuit containing the origin inside it, so the origin has not to be on the circuit, but inside, in the interior part of the circuit, then And this is the important and conceptually difficult part. It is not possible to shrink the circuit up to a point, always remaining in the domain. This is the idea of whole. Why? Because, indeed, 
sooner or later. As the circuit shrinks, it will cross the hole, which in our case is the origin. So it is a So uh, probably it will be better to have a, a video now, but I'll try to do it here. Then let me cancel this blue guy here and uh, stress the origin here. You can imagine to have, uh, for instance, a pole here, a vertical pole, so going outside the blackboard if you want, if you can help. So, however, the idea is that you start with a circuit. Then you want to shrink it. You are quite free to choose in which direction to shrink more. Then you shrink again and again. Your aim is to shrink it up to a point. So sooner or later when shrinking it, you will go to the origin. If you want to get a point when shrinking it, you have to pass through the origin and this is forbidden because the origin is in the domain so the idea of hole is exact, exactly this if you have a hole in the domain then there are circuits for which it is not possible to shrink the circuit up to a point always remaining in the domain it is not possible you have to pass through the hole. Try to visualize this idea. It's a deep mathematical idea. And uh, it is always striking to me when I explain again, when I, like in this case, just tell you what is the condition, that such uh, sort of microscopic, refined mathematical condition has a huge, has an extremely huge reach of consequences, both at a mathematical and at a physical level. Here the problem is just here. And uh, I will tell you this, that uh, I will try to, do, to give you some, uh, some more explanation. So in our example, the only circuit in which the circulation is non-zero, namely the circuits that prejudge the conservativity, that prevent our field from being conservative, are exactly those including the origin, so the whole of the domain, in their interior part. What does it mean? It means that if you have a circuit like that, then the origin is not in its interior part. Of course, this is the interior part. The origin is not somewhere here, hidden here. And so the circulation of the field here is zero. But if you have a circuit whatever strange and crazy like this that contains the origin in its interior part, then the circulation will be not zero. That's really amazing. And uh, so what we have at the end uh, is a theorem Theorem, read the theorem because it is quite important. So the theorem says that F is a 
planner field whose domain and let me be not completely not completely formal here whose domain has oh sorry has no holes f is a planner field whose domain has no holes at this point the conclusion is that if f is irrotational then it is conservative here it is not a mathematical work i told you here that uh, has no holes in the sense that whenever you have a circuit, a closed curve, you can shrink it with continuity up to a point remaining inside the domain. So probably you always underestimate the role of the domain in all analysis in no mathematics. The domain is a sort of boring detail. But now you discover that there is at least a topics which is very important where the domain plays a key role okay so and here let me do it another comment another remark which is uh, the following previous condition is uh, only sufficient so there are fields planar fields that are defined on a domain with no holes that are irrotational and conservative. Let me give you an example on that. So, again, An example, a quite standard example, can be the following. You consider the same field as before, but... Uh, oh, first of all, let me draw some arrows here and here. And now the field we, we consider is the following. We have F equal to not minus Y, by, but X divided X squared plus Y squared y x squared plus y squared and the domain of f is again r2 minus the origin but consider the same circuit that gave us problems in the previous example okay this is the circle in this direction so as before r of t is cosine of t, sine of t, and zero. Mm -hmm. So our dot of t, as before, was, uh, oh, okay, times r, like we did, because 
this is R and R dot of T is minus sine of T cosine of T zero times R and the field computed on R of T is cosine of T divided by R squared sine of T divided by R squared and then zero so when you consider the circulation of F let me call it C like circle on C then you have to integrate between 0 and 2 pi F computed on R of T dot R dot of T dt so let us compute this scalar product from 0 and 2 pi and so we first have the product of the two first components which is cosine of t times minus sine of t here there is r square here there is r so you get one oh sorry i want the blue color for coherence so this is one over r minus sine t cosine t and then the second term is sine t cos t times 1 over r so plus sine of t cosine of t in dt but of course these two terms cancel each other and you end up with zero so even though here the domain here the domain is uh, the same and again it has a hole here what you have is that this circuit gives you no problem and moreover, as an exercise, I leave you as an exercise for you this is homework proof that the field F is irrotational. This amounts just to computing the, the, um, the curl. And uh, of course, for planar fields, the curl re reduces to its set component namely the following d x f2 minus d y f1 and this closes the bracket and uh, so I have to put also here some arrow. So here we have another irrotational field that resembles a bit the previous one, but it gives no problem. It is conservative. And uh, here you can ask why the 
line integral, the circulation on C is uh, zero because this field is orientated like that, always orthogonal to this circle, while the previous one, the one that gave us so many problems, was parallel to the circle. So it is clear that since it is orthogonal, the dot product here gives zero. And so the circulation, which is just the integral of a dot product, that is always zero, gives zero too. So this is a extremely interesting. We have a hole, but a hole does not prevent this field to be conservative. So be always very careful about how to use these theorems. I just uh, remind you here what is the logic of the theorem that we proved to today.